Well, joining us now on Encounter is author and editor-at-large of the Jesuit magazine America, Father Jim Martin. Thanks so much for being with us, Father Jim. My pleasure. Well, um, we mentioned you're the author of several books, but one of your most well-known books, My Life with the Saints, is actually celebrating its 10-year anniversary. Can you believe it's been 10 years? I know. It makes me feel <laughs> somewhat old. <laughs> but I'm happy that Loyola Press brought out a uh, special 10th anniversary edition. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that. I, I understand there's an update on what you've been doing the past 10 years. Yeah, so Loyola Press uh, suggested it. The book had done uh, quite well, and uh, they said, you know, would you like to update it? Uh, and they suggested uh, a foreword by someone else, and that turns out to be John Allen, the uh, Vatican oh, correspondent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then they asked me to... Um, uh, put an epilogue in, and it, it's a fairly substantial epilogue. I, I said, well, I'll do something short. And they said, no, we'd like 5,000 words, which <laughs> is a kind of a, a you know regular uh, length chapter. So what I do is I answer uh, the three uh, questions that I'm asked the most frequently when I talk about the book, and that is, why didn't you put my favorite saint in? <laughs> uh, why did you include people uh, who weren't saints, you know, officially canonized saints, uh, and do you have a plans for a sequel? Um, so I answered those questions and then sort of updated people on my life and sort of uh, new sort of insights that I have on sanctity and the saints. And, and you mentioned, too, this is a very popular book, uh, one of Publisher Weekly's best books of the year at the time, one of Christopher Ward, Catholic Press Association. Why, why do you think people connected to this book and the way you presented the saints in your life? That's a good question. I think that um, people like the real life stories of the saints. Um, you know, a lot of the saints' stories are kind of encrusted with legends and, and, you know, sort of strange tales. But when you get to the real lives of the saints, they're, they're really interesting. Uh, and also, um, you know, I tried to make it inviting and accessible. So, so nothing that was too uh, academic or too theological, but something that people could really kind of sink their teeth into. Yeah. And we just recently celebrated the canonization of Mother Teresa, and I know she's mentioned in the book, but, but what was it like for you to see um, this amazing, unassuming nun uh, make such an impact, uh, not only in the people uh, of the streets of Calcutta, but throughout the whole world, Catholics and, and non-Catholics alike? Well, one of the exciting things is that, uh, you know, in the book I talk about saints like Peter and Therese of Lisieux, who are long dead. Uh, and it's really interesting to see uh, people's reaction to someone that they knew, you know, in their lifetime. Everybody knew Mother Teresa, you know, up until the time she died in 1997. Um, and so to know that we were alive the same time that a saint was alive is, uh, I think, is pretty exciting. Also, I think that her struggle with uh, spiritual darkness, um, which everybody knows about now, is a real uh, invitation for many people who struggle in their own lives to kind of connect with her and to realize that, you know, that's not so unusual. So I think both of those things really were exciting for me. We recently welcomed here in the Archdiocese of Boston uh, the relic of the heart of St. Padre Pio, and maybe many people uh, came out to venerate that. Um, what is it about the, the presence of a relic or, or visiting the places of where saints actually walked or, you know, that really touch people? Well, it connects us to them in a real physical way. It reminds us that these are not legendary figures. You know, Padre Pio is not some legend. It's he's a he's a man who lived, uh, and here's kind of a physical, tangible proof. You know, and a lot of people make fun of relics, but uh, I always say to people, uh, you know, go to eBay and you'll see something like, you know, you buy like a, a brick from the White House or you know Marilyn Monroe's shoe or something like that. There's there's a need for us to connect to people uh, in a physical way, and then again, it reminds us that these were real physical people who lived flesh and blood lives and it's a it's an invitation for us to to you know in our own sort of bodiliness and fleshiness you know as it were to live holy lives as well as we can I, I know you've written a number of books since 2006 too uh, but I was wondering if you um, working on anything now or new at this time yeah actually at this moment sitting in front of my computer I'm working on a book uh, called how to pray uh -huh. um, which is you know about how to pray uh, and it's sort of straight down the middle, just an introduction to prayer. Um, and then a couple months ago, I had a book called Seven Last Words that was a meditation on Jesus' seven last phrases on the cross. So, um, yeah, so I'm keeping busy or trying to. <laughs> Excellent. Well, My Life with the Saints 10-Year Anniversary Edition, it's out, and I, I suppose you can pick it up wherever good books are sold. Exactly. Uh, Excellent. Thanks so much for being with us today, Father Jim. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Anytime.